Welcome back, it is Friday and that means FNA Friday and today's topic is taking care of yourself. That's right, today I'm gonna to talk about keeping yourself healthy in a good state of mind, physically and mentally. And it's a topic I wanna to talk about for a while. And actually just yesterday, I was thinking about it and a coworker asked me about it. Hey, did you ever do an FNA about keeping your body healthy when animating? What a coincidence. Yes, that's what I wanted to do. So we kind of exchanged some of the topics and points that we thought were interesting. So today's topic is all the things that we talked about. So one of the things is posture. So for me, when I start animating, oh, let me move over here. I usually, you wanna be, you know, somewhat straight to have not like a curved back so that you have all the strain in your back and your shoulders like technically you want to be upright on the chair that supports that upper arm down forearm forming an 80 degree angle and you sit like that and you have your whatever ergonomics you know keyboard and mouse i'll talk about that later but technically that's your general stance that and posture that they would recommend that being said i start like this at the beginning of the day and then towards the end you know i start slouching and it's just bad but at the same time i do switch around i mean i start like this and maybe like that and like i do have kind of a change in my posture throughout so I don't stay locked in a pose and I'm old so it starts to hurt when I'm staying in a certain pose. I also have a standing desk at work and at home. So I have changes in terms of how I stand and sit. So to me, posture is already something where you don't always, you know, uh, completely you know, hunched over and bad for your back and your shoulders and your neck and everything. So watch out for that. And now every time I do change the posture, it could just be because I'm reminded of this something is wrong and it's hurting or just taking a break. And that's to me, the other thing that's really important is that you, even though if you're focused on something and you're in a special, you know, flow and in like a groove, like, oh, this is working really well and this shot is cool. You still have to remind yourself to take breaks. So one of the things that I do, I drink a ton of water. My water bottle, which actually purifies my water. I'll do a review about this later, but I drink a ton of water. And because of that, I have to go pee, which forces me to get up and I have to go to the bathroom. And then I walk over there. I don't take the elevator. Sometimes I do, but you know, I try to move around and, and sometimes again, I get too locked into a shot and too concentrated. And I don't take enough breaks, but by drinking and then forcing myself to go to the bathroom, that's one of the ways. And of course you can do a reminder on your phone. If you have a smartwatch with some of the reminders or whatever you have, or a coworker that comes by and slaps you on your head, like take a break, whatever you need. This is definitely something that's important that you do you take breaks so that you can relax your shoulders, you can relax your wrist, you can relax your fingers and your neck and everything. So don't push too hard. Even if you're a certain mindset and the groove of that shot, you gotta take breaks. And then if you take a break, you come back to your shot, you got fresh eyes and you might see some mistakes you missed before, the many benefits. Now, speaking of all of this here, you can also do desk yoga, desk stretches where you have all those things where you stretch like this and like that and this and that. And as always, link in the description with some of those examples that will help you kind of loosen up and loosen up your shoulders and your elbows and your arms and your necks. Really important to not just take a break, but then also stretch out and then kind of change the posture and kind of relax your body and you know, get a different, different blood flow going. And again, a lot of those, those elbow oh, oh, stretches for a long period of time, what I'm doing is not right. So check out the link for all the information about that. A big thing too is ergonomics in terms of the things that you use. So I have a pen. Just dropped it. I got two pens, two computers. Never mind. It's my setup. I could switch to have just one pen. But anyway, pens, right? I use a tablet at home. That's my tablet. Just activated something. And then at work, I actually do have a marble mouse. It's a Logitech. It's not one where it's for lefty or righties. I'm a lefty, but it's it's a, a kind of like a centered one where I just kind of just rest my wrist on it and just kind of use basically those three fingers to animate. So I have a different setup at work. Also with the desk has a you know flat surface for the monitors, but then an angled surface for my wrist. So if I sit down, you want your hands to be straight. So your forearm and your wrist are aligned. So you don't want something where your keyboard is elevated and you're in a weird position where then your wrists are like this to type. That will cost strain and it's not good either. So with that mouse, I have just a flat angle for my wrist and I just use this. And when I use the mouse, I kind of tense up and kind of hold this when I move every single pixel and I get a lot of pain in the fingers here. And so for years, I mean, I stopped a long time ago. So for years I've been using this marble mouse and it's been great. And then at home I use this. I mean, I could use the marble mouse as well, but because I do things at home and at work, I want to change it up a bit. So standing, sitting, that's in terms of posture, but also using this and a different mouse. And some people have mice that are you know, sideways where you just I mean, it's not like this, but your hand is sideways and you kind of move your whole arm like this. I'm not a fan of this because it, I, I, I mean, I got maybe not used to this, but it's something in my shoulder, my elbow. It wasn't quite working for me, but I know people who use those and that also works for them. I mean, I have at home this, 
this keyboard, different keyboard at work, um, but it's not one that's broken up, but some people have broken up keyboards with different angles. So whatever works best for you, but really check out the things that will help you in the long term so that you can sit there for a long time and do your work. Of course, take breaks, but something where you really don't get immediate pain in your fingers or your wrists or your elbows or depending what it is. Also, the angle of the screen is important so that you sit and you look straight at the monitor. So you don't always look like that or like that up or down. If you have multiple monitors, this constant left and right can also be a problem. My widescreen one that I just kept here is widescreen and cool, but not too widescreen. I don't have to do a crazy amount of looking around and it's just enough. And because it's more wide than high, it's a bit more than this and less of that. But overall, I find it to be really, really good. And my other monitor was, was cool too, almost a bit too high where there was a bit of this going on. And I feel like because I changed my posture like this, I feel like the left and right at the end helps me and it's better than this where sometimes it might be locked in a posture like this. Not that I look up like this high, but ultimately I prefer for my setup that widescreen monitor that I have right now. Now on top of that, it's not just what you do at work, but it's also when you're done. So if you're sitting all day or hopefully you can sit and stand, but you potentially are sitting all day. So maybe then you have to go and when you get home, you sit in the bus all day during your commute or you sit in your car. There might just be a lot of sitting. So try to also balance that with exercises at home, even if it's just for a walk or like a, a quick intense run or heavy weights or even if you're an old Wii and do some Wii tennis or something but I would try to get also a bit of a balance and exercise at home especially as you get older do some heavy lifting again something that breaks up that constant same posture or sitting style at work get out of that bubble of just sitting and, and working and staring at your computer which again staring you might have to wear those glasses either gunner glass or whatever that are have that yellow tint that kind of give it a warmer feel to your screen that constant screen output where it's that blue light also not too good. I use something called F.Lux, again, link in the description, that changes the temperature of my screen depending on the time of day. So towards the end of the day, it gets a bit warmer. During the day, it's a bit more blue. Kind of the same thing that I have on my phone. So that I've noticed that helps me as well. And I prefer that over constantly wearing glasses. And I would also try to be in a lit room. I should probably uh, more light. But if you're in a dark room and then you have just the screen light that constantly just you know has that constant glare and light into your eyes in a dark room, that's not good either. So try to be an environment that has enough light that kind of adds to the light from the monitor. And it's tricky for people like compositors who have to have it dark because of the colors and everything. It's just a very dangerous thing. There was somewhere a story about, I think a storyboarder using a Cintiq with the lights just constant in their eyes and they had something where they almost turned blind. Some crazy horror story. So research, find out what other artists are doing again, what I'm saying is just my subjective thing that I do that helps me. So kind of look at your environment, your setup, what you can do, do some research of other artists, what they experience, what their pieces of advice are to get a good overview of what to use and, and what will work best for your setup and your type of work and your schedule. Probably forgot something was I have a certain, you know, I've been working now for 16 years, the same company and it's I got kind of a, a routine of things and what I do and but off the top of my head and the list that we talked about with Alberto, these are kind of the topics that came up. If I do remember something that just like, how can I forget this? Obviously, I'll add it in the comments. I'll pin it and I can always update it there. And speaking of comments, whatever you use that I haven't mentioned or you want to mention something that I said and you go, yeah, I do the same thing. Let me know in the comments. It would be cool to get a bit of a discussion going with tips and tricks and just other links and just things that you do that help in your daily workflow to avoid the, the cramping and just the, the, the hardship of constantly sitting, which I know sounds like a big first world problem. But if you do this every day for years on end, your body will just it will slowly fall apart. So comment, let me know what you do, let other people know what your preferred method is in terms of your chair, your mouse, your keyboard, the monitor, whatever setup you have, it would be interesting to know, kind of get kind of a collection of people's thoughts and experiences and comments. So yeah, take care of yourself, especially the job like this, where you're doing this repetitively every day, Monday to Friday, maybe Monday to Saturday, maybe Monday to Sunday, depending on your schedule and your project. So take care of yourself mentally and physically. This is more of a physical thing, but it also helps again with all those breaks to kind of you get home and you don't think about work, do something else, do something totally different where it's not on the screen. Even if it's just a book, turning pages in a book, exercising, going out, walk the dog, do stuff with your family, but try to have really a breakup between work time and time outside of work to kind of change things up for your physical health, but also for your mental health. And there you go. And kind of serious towards the end, I don't know how I'm going to segue into like and subscribe, that type of thing. But if you feel like this was helpful and you want more tips, and this could be about health stuff or it could be something that's work related, but it's always going to be somewhat animation related. Feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button. It's kind of a weird segue after this, like take care of yourself, but also subscribe. But anyway, it helps me grow the channel, but you don't have to do anything if you don't want to. Other than that, 
that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Of course, until the very end, thank you for your patience and I will see you in my next upload.